Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Erudi Space. I am Dr. Samadarshan Mohanty, and today we will discuss about the internal energy. So in this class, first I will give a broader classification of energy. Then I will tell you what is internal energy, and then I will tell you why internal energy is always represented at change in internal energy. So as far as the energy is concerned, energy is broadly classified into energy in transit and energy in storage. So what is energy in transit and what is energy in storage? First, we'll talk about the energy in transit. Your work and heat are the energy in transit. They do cross the system boundaries. And energy in transit are always path functions. They are not point functions. All of us know that the work transport is represented by area coming under the PV diagram. Suppose this is the process, then the area coming under this represents the work transfer. Similarly, when it comes to heat transfer, the area coming under the TS diagram represents the heat transfer. So these are your path functions. Today, our focus will be on energy in storage. So as far as energy in storage is concerned, it can be at the macroscopic level, it may be at the microscopic level. So when we are talking about the stored energy at microscopic level, the two energies which comes to our mind are your kinetic energy and our potential energy. All of us are well acquainted with both kinetic energy and potential energy and we have been studying this from almost primary level and the kinetic energy is represented by half mv square where m is the mass of the substance and v is the velocity and potential energy is represented by mgh where N is the mass, G is the acceleration due to gravity, and H is the height. But today, what is microscopic energy? Because microscopic energy is something upon which we will focus our attention for study of the internal energy. So, whether the substance is at solid state, liquid state, a gaseous state. Always some sort of motion is observed. Even when you are considering a solid substance, the molecules may be stationary for our naked eye, but they do undergo some sort of vibration. And when it comes to your liquid state, they do interchange their position. And that is more vigorous when it comes to the gaseous state. So, so, they do undergo translation, they do undergo rotation, they do undergo vibration, they do possess some chemical energy also. There may be electronic energy, there may be nuclear energy. So, if you consider epsilon as the stored energy of a single molecule, then you do have the energy due to translation, you have energy due to rotation, you do have energy due to vibration, you do have energy due to chemical reaction, you do have energy due to electronic and then energy 
nuclear energy. So total internal energy U is equal to N epsilon where N is the total number of molecules present. Now, when it comes to the ideal gases, the forces of attraction and repulsion are not present and in that case, the internal energy may be represented as a function of temperature only. Now, the total energy E is actually the summation of kinetic energy, potential energy as well as this internal energy. So, you may represent this as you may also represent this as Ke and Pe. In this case, I have represented this as E suffix K and E suffix P. If both these things are zero, then the in internal energy is nothing but the stored energy. So in that case, E becomes U. Now, already we have started the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system undergoing a change of state. In that case, the total heat supply is equal to the change in energy plus the work done. Now, this delta E represents the change in energy and particularly the case where kinetic and potential energy are not present, this becomes Q is equal to delta U plus W. Now the question comes that we are considering delta U and it is not specific to this case. In all the cases, we do represent internal energy as change in internal energy. So what is the reason for that? Because the internal energy at a particular condition is almost impossible to find out because the changes are taking place at the microscopic level. So for that reason, always the internal energy is represented as change in internal energy. I can give a specific example so that you can correlate that with the change in internal energy. Suppose you are running some sort of business and you are very poor at record keeping. You do not know what is your asset. Suppose you get a government aid of 50,000. Now, you do not know what is your asset and you also do not know that what has become your asset after getting this aid. But one thing that you can say that your asset has increased by 50,000 if you are getting a, an aid of 50,000. The same principle may be adopted in that case and this is not, not specific to internal energy. Even in case of enthalpy also, we do take into consideration the change in enthalpy and the entire study of enthalpy is on the basis of change of enthalpy. The same is about entropy also. We do take into consideration the change in entropy and it is not required to know the internal energy at a specific point to make a thermodynamic analysis. The change in internal energy will also do. So I sincerely believe that today's lecture on internal energy would be extremely useful to all of you. If you have any doubt, you may put that question to me so that I will be able to answer that question. Do subscribe to my channel if you have not done so till now. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope to see you soon for another lecture.